already in this question we are given a rectangular block is composed of three different glass prisms uh, with the fractive indices mu1 mu2 and mu3 as shown in the figure so there are three different glass prisms one is this one is this and one is this uh, the ray of light a ray of light is incident normal to the left face so this ray of light is incident normal to the left face that means the angle of incidence for this ray of light will be zero degree if we draw the normal it will come along this line so that means this ray of light should go uh, undeviated like this until it hits uh, the surface of the next prism because the angle of incidence is zero the angle of refraction should also be equal to zero so here r will be equal to zero but when it hits here if we draw the normal at this point say this is the normal at this point of incidence we see that uh, this is the angle of incidence now made uh, from the diagram this angle is 45 and this total angle is 90 so uh, clearly this ray is uh, parallel to this base of this prism so this angle should be equal to 45 if this angle will be equal to 45 degree and this total angle being 90 this angle this angle here that we have marked should be equal to 45 degree 90 degree minus 45 will give us 45 so this is uh, about this ray which has entered now about this ray which is leaving uh, it is also given to us that this ray is leaving normally that means its angle of refraction here the emergence that angle comes out to be zero degree that means its angle of incidence should also be zero that means this ray uh, while moving in had come like this undeviated so this ray had come like this so this angle of incidence here at this point this is again equal to zero degree only then can angle of refraction be zero so uh, this is how these two rays look like that means the ray which is inside the prism it should be looking like this so it should have deviated like this so this is the path of the rays uh, as uh, is evident from the diagram now if we draw uh, the normal at this point where uh, this ray is leaving uh, the second prism say this is the perpendicular line passing through this two point so this is the normal uh, clearly we see that this angle is given to us is 45 this angle is given to us is 45 that means this angle here should also be 45 if this is 45 and this total is 90 that means this angle here should also be 45 why is this angle important this 45 degree angle because this angle is angle of refraction here this is angle made by the refracted ray with the normal and say if i mark these angles say this angle is r1 and this angle as equal to r2 uh, then clearly this r1 plus r2 plus this angle uh, if i ma if uh, i make these two normals they intersect say at this point the normals have intersected sum of all these three angles should be equal to uh, 180 because these are three angles of uh, a triangle so we clearly see here that r1 plus r2 should be a plus uh, this angle here that we see say uh, this angle is uh, some angle let's mark this angle as theta plus theta this value is equal to 180 degrees and if we see of this uh, prism which uh, is given to us as gray this angle is 45 this angle is 45 that means this angle here is 90 degrees so if this angle is 90 degrees consider this quadrilateral here let's mark these points say this point is A, this point is say B, this point here is say C and this point here is say D. Then in this diagram there is a quadrilateral ABCD. We see angle A plus this angle that is uh, angle at B which is 90 plus this angle angle at D which is 90 plus this angle theta. So A plus theta plus 90 plus 90 that is 180 this angle should be equal the sum of these angles should be equal to 360 sum of four angles of a quadrilateral is 360 so following this we see that uh, uh, this 180 gets cancelled here so we get a plus theta as equal to 180 degree now from these two equations clearly r1 plus r2 plus theta is 180 a plus theta is 180 we compare 
uh, theta gets cancelled we get r1 plus r2 as equal to a and a is also given to us as 90 degrees so we happen to find out that r1 plus r2 comes out to be equal to 90 degree from the geometry of the figure now if we apply Snell's law at point P sin of 45 degree that is the angle of incidence at point B at B sin 45 by sin R1 this should be equal to mu 2 by mu 1 we are following Snell's law Now if I apply Snell's law at point D, we see sin of R2 divided by sin 45, this value will be equal to mu3 divided by mu2, following Snell's law again. So from the first equation, we find out that sin R1, this value comes out to be equal to uh, mu1 divided by mu2, we shift this mu1 here, we shift this mu2 here, sin 45 is 1 by root 2, this value will be equal to sin r1 and from the second equation we find out sin r2, this value comes out to be equal to uh, mu3 divided by mu2 into sin 45, sin 45 again is 1 by root 2. Uh, now we have got sin r1 and sin r2 and we also know that r1 plus r2 is 90 degrees. So if we fill the value of r2 here as uh, 90 degree minus r1, since this equation would give us r2 as equal to 90 degree minus r1. So this means this value will be equal to mu3 by mu2 into 1 by root 2. So this comes out to be cosine of r1 as equal to mu3 divided by mu2 root 2. Now if uh, this equation and this equation, if we square and add them, we get sin square r1 plus cosine square r1 as equal to uh, mu1 square by 2 mu2 square plus this is square of this term and square of this term will be mu3 square divided by 2 mu2 square so on the left hand side we end up getting 1 so this value equals mu1 square plus mu3 square divided by 2 mu2 square and now if we rearrange this equation we end up getting mu1 square plus mu3 square this value equals 2 times mu2 square so this is the equation that we end up getting here in this question and uh, this is given to us in uh, option C. So the correct answer to this option, to, to this question is uh, option C.